Oh boy, that was kind of tough to watch, to be honest. Bears football is back in action. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is preseason football because our Chicago Bears lost to the Carolina Panthers by a score of 23-13 to in their first preseason game. And you know it's preseason football because we lost, right? We're not going to lose games like that in the regular season. What is up, guys? I'm back with another recap. My first game recap of the entire year. It's so good to be back doing those because I miss doing those. Ever since we lost to the Eagles last year in the playoffs, you know, that was my last one. So I'll be continued, I'll continue doing these for every single game this season, hopefully, and, you know, give you guys my reactions, my post-game analysis of what happened in every single game that the Bears play. Just being honest about this recap, you know, it's not going to be a long one because I don't have that much to say, to be honest. I was kind of getting bored near the end there because our quarterbacks were playing so bad, so that was kind of tough to watch, but... I mean, for preseason games, you're not really taking away much from the game itself. You're taking away stuff from how the players played, right? You take away stuff from how each individual player played. You know, if they made plays, you know, how they reacted in certain situations. You don't look at the game score because the game score is meaningless. Preseason football does not mean anything at all. So don't worry that we lost this game. It literally means absolutely nothing. So yeah, let's get right into my recap. The first thing I want to talk about is David freaking Montgomery because David Montgomery showed us today why we drafted him in the third round and why we traded away Jordan Howard. I've been telling you guys all training camp, you know, not just me, but everybody else. David Montgomery possesses certain skills that Jordan Howard just does not have, right? His ability to cut up the field, you know, move side to side, that lateral quickness, that speed, that agility the ability to you know just evade defenders right juke defenders and still sometimes plow through people and fall forward you know these are all things that David Montgomery can do and he can catch the ball as well you saw him very involved in the receiving game today he had uh, I believe 30 yards receiving um, and he, he only had 16 yards rushing because he only had three carries and only three you know receptions too so he was barely given any snaps today but still out of all the snaps he got he made the absolute most of them. You saw on his touchdown, right? He had that beautiful stutter step, you know, to evade the defender and juke to the outside and go in for the easy touchdown. So it's stuff like that, right, that you never saw out of Jordan Howard and stuff like that that Matt Nagy really needs in his offense. So I am so happy that David Montgomery is showing these things in preseason games, even though it is against backups, you know, you always love to see stuff like this. So I am very hyped for David Montgomery. In case you guys are wondering about Trubisky, you know, Trubisky did start the game, but he only handed the ball off like three times and then he was done. So I'm not exactly sure why Nagy even put him in the game to begin with because that's kind of pointless. But, you know, nonetheless, I'm happy no injuries happened, but we did not see much out of Trubisky today. Let's talk about the quarterbacks that did play today, Chase Daniel and Tyler Bray. And man, they showed us why they are backup quarterbacks in the NFL because they did not play that good. I mean, to be fair, Chase Daniel was not that bad. He was actually, you know, fairly decent, okay? I'm, I'm probably being too hard on Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel was decent. He was 11 out of 13, 120 yards, a 105.1 quarterback rating. So he did not have any touchdowns or interceptions. So he was not like, it, it just seemed like he did not make that much of a difference. But I feel like, I guess he did make some plays here and there. Um, he missed Marvin Hall deep for the long touchdown. I think it would have been like 50, 60 yards which that would have been a real heck of a play, right? But he just did not place the ball where it needed to be placed. So, you know, it's stuff like this where you really miss having Trubisky because Trubisky, although he is inaccurate sometimes, you know, he possesses certain athletic abilities and certain, you know, uh, quarterback abilities that Chase Daniel and Tyler Bray just do not have. Tyler Bray especially looked horrible. I mean, he was 8 out of 17 for 85 yards, um, 0 touchdowns, 0 interceptions, a quarterback rating of 62. Man, he kind of looked like Mike Glennon out there, to be honest. I mean, he's the same height. He played poorly like Mike Glennon played too. So, I mean, he just kept on going three and out so many times. He had horrible ball placement. Just, you know, he missed Marvin Hall deep as well, just like Chase Daniel did. So, if I was Marvin Hall, I would be so pissed that these trash quarterbacks ruined my, you know, two long touchdowns. Because, especially that one with Tyler Bray, if you just put the ball in front of him, 
Don't put him behind him. Don't underthrow him. Just put it in front of him. He's going to at least make the catch or, you know, run in for the touchdown. So it's stuff like that where you just really miss Trubisky. One player that really caught my eye tonight was Josh Woods, linebacker Josh Woods, because he looked incredible out there, to be honest. I mean, I saw him making a bunch of plays. He had a forced fumble, you know, hitting the receiver right where the ball was, just popping the ball out. And um, I forgot who recovered it, but that was just a beautiful forced fumble. He was making plays everywhere, just being very solid in coverage. He looked very fast as well, so I love to see this out of Josh Woods. I'm really hoping he can get a roster spot because it's kind of looking dicey out there at the linebacker position. We have so much depth, but I would love for him to get a roster spot. We also got to talk about Deion Bush, man, because Deion Bush showed us tonight that he's going to be a solid backup safety for the entire season for us. He's been here for a couple years now. He's been in the system for a while. I mean, it's a new system now with Chuck Pagano. But, I mean, he showed us that he is a playmaker out there. He had an interception. He was very physical the entire time, you know, sticking to the receiver, making aggressive tackles, being in your face, you know, breaking up a ton of passes. So I love to see that out of Deion Bush. If Eddie Jackson or Haha Clintendix get injured or go down for the season or whatever, you know, God forbid, I think we're in pretty good hands with Deion Bush because... He's a very solid safety. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about who else stood out because otherwise I'd be here forever since there were a ton of people that did play good, that did stand out. But Ian Bunting looked pretty nice to me at the tight end spot. You know, obviously Trey Burton, Adam Shaheen did not play. Broniker did play. Raymond did play. Ian Bunting did play as well and so well too. But out of all of them, I think Ian Bunting did look the best because he had a beautiful catch in I think the second or third quarter where you know, just going straight down the middle. The run after the catch was very solid um, going down near the end zone. So I love to see the good hands out of Ian Bunting because you already know how good of a blocker he is. Um, who else looked good? Roy, uh, Roy Robertson Harris looked pretty good as well. I mean, he has already played a lot in the NFL, so that's no big surprise. He had a very big hit on Will Greer, knocking him down to the ground. He's trying to injure all the quarterbacks, I swear. So... He looked pretty good. Duke Shelley was out there making some pretty solid tackles. Clifton Duck in the first half, he kind of struggled. But in the second half, I thought he played pretty solid. Um, Carrot White looked like Tariq Cohen during one run. Just right going inside and juking to the outside, going down the sidelines. So Carrot White looked pretty nice out there. But yeah, that's pretty much all the notes I have. Oh yeah, also Roquan Smith, right? <laughs> Roquan Smith on one of the opening plays of the game. Just going straight down the middle on a blitz and getting that beautiful sack right there. Obviously, nobody was blocking him, but he was just showing his speed right there, right? His ability to get to the quarterback within a couple of seconds on a blitz. So I love to see that. Let me end by talking about the kickers because that is a position that we all care about the most, it seems like, nowadays. Because after every field goal, right? After every made field goal tonight, you heard the cheers at Soldier Field, right? Even for extra points. I mean, people were clapping. People were standing up and, like, jumping up and down. Man, after an extra point in preseason... You never see that in NFL preseason ever, but we are Chicago Bears fans and we are starved for a great kicker. Pretty much Eddie Pinheiro disappointed tonight and Elliot Fry did not. He looked pretty solid out there. Um, Elliot Fry, let me pull up his stats right now. But um, So Elliot Fry, he made one extra point. He made his only field goal, which was a 43-yard field goal. And yes, he was iced as well for some reason. I don't know why. Um, Ron Rivera probably just trying to sh throw shade at us or maybe help us out in a way because he's trying to put pressure on our kickers and help us find a good one. But um, Elliot Fry made both of his kicks and he looked pretty solid out there after being iced at the same, you know, yardage that Cody Parkey missed at. He made that field goal, although it was it was only preseason, so you cannot take away too much from it. Who knows what he would have done in a real, you know, playoff game, but. I'm happy to see that out of Elliot Fry. Eddie Pinero not doing that well. I think he missed from, what, like 52 yards? Was it 52? It might have been like, maybe, it was around 50 yards, I know, but he straight up missed that wide left. And, I mean, he could have actually double doinked that because it was kind of close. Not double doinked, I'm sorry. Just doinked, regular doink. I'm so sorry. I'm so sick of saying double doink, so I'm just... It, it's become part of my vocabulary at this point. But yeah, regardless, <laughs> Eddie Pinheiro did not do that good. It's fine, though. It was only one bad game. Let's see if he rebounds in the next game. But if he does not, you know, Elliot Fry might be pulling forward a little bit, which is kind of strange because I thought that Eddie Pinheiro was, you know, had a leg up on him right now, but apparently not after this game.
that is going to wrap up my video. Like I said, it was a short little video, not too much analysis going on because it is preseason football, so you can't really take away too much from this. But still, you know, comment down below how you felt about this game, your thoughts, your opinions, your reactions. If you agree with my analysis, if you disagree, you know, which players stood out to you? Because like I mentioned, there are certain players that definitely did stand out. And let me know what you thought about those players. But our next game is next week. I think next Friday, I believe. I'll put the date right here. I can't recall it off the top of my head. But I'll be back for another post-game reaction after that one too. Hopefully it's more exciting. Hopefully Trubisky takes maybe a few more snaps. You know, not too many, but maybe a little bit more just to get us more excited. But that is all. As always, bear down. <laughs>